Let us look at some useful summarizing functions when we are applying, applying summarize. Okay, so let's get the average of positive delays only, right? Because there are some delays which are negative because often flights can reach before time or take off before time and so on. So flights group by year, month, day, summarize average delay one, uh, arrival delay one is mean of arrival delay and a dot rm equals true. And then here we are saying take the mean of the arrival delay only for values in which the arrival delay is greater than zero. And again, na dot rm equals true. Okay, so you could do that and get averages of only the positive values. Sometimes you will want to do that. So here we are saying uh, flights grouped by destination summarize distance st equals st distance na dot rm equals true. That is the uh, standard deviation of the distance to each destination because we have grouped by destination and then we are doing arranging it by descending order of the standard deviation to the destination. Okay, so why is the standard deviation for some destinations higher than for others? Right, after all, like we discussed earlier, you're flying from New York to Atlanta, right? So why should there be even any variation in the distance, right? Of course that is happening because as I said earlier, your flight may not always fly in exactly the same path. There would be slight variations depending on air traffic control or weather patterns and so on. Air traffic control might, uh, you know, route your flight through a long distance one day and through a very short distance the other day. So there is a variability, okay? And therefore there is a standard deviation of the distance for a particular destination question is why is the SD for some destinations higher okay most likely what happens is that the variability in the distance is likely to be higher if the dis uh, if the destination is far away right that is because then there are more opportunities for it to get rerouted so the variability will be higher whereas a flight going from let's say Newark to Washington DC there is not that much opportunity for the flight to get rerouted Again, that is because the weather patterns in these two places are likely to be very similar. So there is not likely to be much opportunity to uh, route it because of weather. So there could be those kinds of explanations, right? But you are seeing here that there is a variability in the uh, average, uh, in the standard deviation of the distance to certain places. Okay, you may say it's very close, 9.46, 10.5. Well, that's a 10% increase. It's quite significant. Okay, so we have our hypothesis that maybe the SD is increasing with mean distance. You know, perhaps more rerouting occurs because of the distance, right? So we could try to verify this hypothesis by doing flights, group by destination, summarize distance mean is mean of distance, NA dot RM equals true, distance SD is SD of distance, NA dot RM equals true, right? So we are speculating that uh, with the increasing distance, there is likely to be more uh, variation in the distance okay and we are trying to verify that hypothesis so we want to plot distance versus uh, distance mean versus distance standard deviation right and we are doing a, a smooth and finding the curve to look like this right of course you know the 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 pattern is not exact that it is definitely increasing with distance but you can see there is a general trend of increasing standard deviation with increasing mean distance. Of course, many of the points are right down here, right? But that means the distance to those places is fairly constant, not that much of variability, okay? But for many other points, there's quite a lot of variability, okay? So the mean and uh, the standard deviation, there's quite a lot of variability, but you can see a general trend that as the distance mean increases, the standard deviation also seems to be increasing somewhat. Okay, let's not pay too much attention to the squiggles of this particular chart. It's being pulled around by, of this particular line. It's being pulled around by outliers quite a lot. Okay, so here we are saying, we're creating a table called not cancel and saying, uh, you know, if the departure time is not NA and if the arrival time is not NA, then it's a not cancelled flight. We'll be using that table as we go forward. Okay, so when do the first and last flights leave each day? Right, uh, so 
again we are using here the fact that the flights are listed chronologically so we are saying not cancelled which is the previous uh, table that we created group by year month day summarize first is minimum of departure time last is maximum of departure time okay so the first flight for each day le leaves at whatever time and the last flight leaves at whatever time the departure times right alternately you can also do summarize first is first last is last okay now both of these will give the same results simply because the data frame is ordered by uh, ordered chronologically okay if it were not ordered chronologically then the correct way to get the first and last flights would be this okay so which destinations have the most carriers so it's quite easy we can group it by destination and uh, just find for uh, every carrier just find n distinct carrier for each destination right so we are finding uh, how many distinct carriers are there for each destination very easy to find out and then we can arrange by descending order of carriers so we find that Atlanta Boston uh, Charlotte Chicago uh, etc have the maximum number of carriers there are seven carriers and there are six and so on to some other places etc okay so notice what we are doing here right we're taking a large data set and simply by grouping and summarizing we are able to get very informative reports very quickly right notice that here we are dealing with a data frame that has more than 330,000 rows it's a big data frame or big table and all of these operations are taking almost no time right you get the data result instantaneously so notice how useful that can be and also notice how you imagine a certain kind of summarization you're able to do that very quickly with dplyr okay so this is where all the power of everything we have learned so far is actually culminating at this point okay so counting is a process we do very often right so for example we are saying not cancel count destination right you can do that that is you want to find out uh, for every destination how many flights went there okay it would be one thing to say uh, not canceled group by destination summarize count equals n you can do that but counting is so frequent that they actually have a function for doing that so you can just do not cancel count destination and it's going to give you this result okay that means there were 254 flights to Albuquerque there were 16,873 flights to Atlanta and so on okay the above code is nothing but a short shortcut for this she grouped by destination summarize n equals n okay notice that when you count destination the column number comes out as n that's the default that R uses okay the column number just comes out as n and here of course when we did it manually we could have given the column number any name column name uh, any name but we chose to give n now you can also count by multiple columns right so if you want to take the origin destination pairs right origin could be any one of the three airports right if you want to take the origin destination pairs and count how many flights operated in each of those pairs you can do that right so for example EW to uh, R to ALB 418 flights EWR to BNA was 2246 flights etc okay notice that the Atlanta flights of 16,000 was obviously made up by EWR to Atlanta and then you know JFK to Atlanta etc right so the point is you can group by multiple uh, columns as we've seen many times before and therefore you can also count by multiple columns okay and again whenever you do a count the default column name is always n you can also do weighted counting just like we did weighted average earlier so we can say here uh, not cancelled that is taking the same not cancelled table we count tail num but we weight the counting by the distance okay so this first things not cancelled count tail num is going to tell us for each tail number right how many rows occur in the table so for example this flyer this uh, plane that is this piece of equipment uh, d94 2dn the 
the, the plane with the tail num that made only four flights whereas the plane with this tail number made 352 flights that is how many rows are there in the table for each of the tail nums okay so instead of how many rows suppose we wanted how much distance has each one traveled then we can do this count tail num but weighted by distance okay so it's going to count the number of occurrences with the tail num but it's going to add up the distance column for each of those right so then you find that this over four flights it flew a total of 3418 miles and so 